being able to sort of have a supportive environment where I could gain the confidence to be a researcher. Um, those two things kind of combined and I just sort of, I found the internal motivation to, to keep trying and I'll tell you, it was hard. I mean, I was working, you know, 14 hour days in the lab. Sometimes I would just sit there and work on trying to get the EEG to work until I finally figured it out. Hmm. Wow. That's incredible. So eventually you moved on to a different university after, is this UNC Wilmington? Is that where you're going to? Yep. I was at UNC Wilmington at the beach. Yep. And then, uh, I actually ended up working. I took a year off, um, because I thought I wanted to go to grad school, but still I didn't really have the confidence for that. <laughs> so you can see the theme in my life. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this is why meditation has helped actually. But, um, I didn't, you know, and I'd never thought I was going to go to graduate school. And um, my my academic path going from high school to college wasn't like, you know, a, a typical person who's planning to go to grad school from high school. They, they do everything. They get all their ducks lined up and they get all the right grades. I didn't do any of that. My, my GPA in high school was like 2.5 or something like that. Right, yeah. <laughs> it was really bad. So Hugging I, the middle of the curve there. Yeah. Right, I had to really, you know... The decision to go to graduate school meant I need to, I needed to do a lot um, at the end there to really make myself look good. So I did an honors thesis um, at the very end of graduate school or undergraduate, um, and then I took a year off to kind of figure out: Do I really want to go to graduate school? And I worked in a lab to kind of build up my resume. So I continued to work with um, Dr. Keith, and I also worked with Lloyd Smith, the guy who donated the EEG to kind of get a sense of whether I wanted to be in the business world. Um, Lloyd ran a business where he was actually selling EEG systems to researchers. And um, although I loved working for Lloyd, he's a very awesome guy and a great mentor, um, I was actually going to science conferences. So actually the Society for Neuroscience meeting where I saw the Dalai Lama, the next year I was a vendor there. <laughs> I was actually setting up a booth and uh, was actually selling EEG equipment to the researchers. Hmm. And I was on the other side of the aisle, so to speak, and yeah. I was sort of miserable in a certain sense because I was seeing all of this awesome science being presented, and I wasn't contributing to it, and I wasn't part of it, um, other than selling the equipment, which is very important, actually. You know, the scientists need the right equipment. Um, but there was something in me that really wanted to to be back on the academic path. Um, and I think everyone around me, including my boss, Lloyd, he knew it. You know, they were looking at me like, you need to get back into thinking about graduate school and you need to just do everything. So I continued to work in the lab. I built up my resume and then I applied to graduate school that next year. And um, honestly, I didn't think I was going to get into one program. And I ended up getting into seven programs, something wow. like that. Um and part of it, I think, is because I just, I put my story in my letter. You know, you have to write this letter of interest to the graduate schools. And, you know, in that letter, I basically just told the story I just told, which is, I've really been following my heart and my nose, you know. And, uh, I'm not trying to be a scientist because I want to get a PhD and feel good. I'm trying to be a scientist because I'm deeply interested in consciousness and the nature of consciousness. And you know, I've been meditating and my own consciousness is changing. And what does that mean? You know, and how do I, how do I empirically study that instead of just intuitively study it or, you know, however else you could. Did you, did you have a moment, because I'm, I'm listening to that story and thinking about people who might uh, think about applying for grad school someday. Was there a moment of um, courage? You know, I always think in, in terms of stepping through courage or stepping into it where you said, I'm going to have to reveal myself and I'm just going to go for it even though I feel vulnerable about it. Was there any hesitation for you because that's a powerful thing is to really share some some deep thoughts you had with people you didn't know because most people might approach these letters of interest and say I need to talk about you know my resume and 
you know, kind of name drop a lot and all these other things, but you had a kind of a different approach. You, you just sort of said very powerfully, this is who I am. Yep. Uh, yeah, that was actually scary to do because I, you know, like you do, I downloaded a bunch of previous, you know, people who had previously gotten into graduate school that post their letters online and I read them and, you know, most of them read, like you said, they kind of set it up in a sort of logical, like, here's what I've done, here's all the other cool stuff I've done. And that just didn't feel right to me. You know, I really wanted to tell the story and give the narrative. And, you know, part of that was I was going to graduate school to continue that narrative. I wasn't going to graduate school just to tick off another mark on my achievement list, right? (laughs) I was going to graduate school with a very specific reason. And so I wanted to tell that story because if, if they didn't want that story, I didn't want to go to grad school. You know, and I really was looking at it that way. Like, I'm putting myself out there, honestly, and if if the graduate committees or the professors don't like it, then I'm going to do that some other way. You know, and I kind of really, I had that intention in my head. My intention was to really study consciousness. And if, if the academic world said no for whatever reason, then I was going to find another way. And I kind of in my head had decided to that I wasn't going to get in, you know, I kind of let go in a certain sense of graduate school (laughs) when I wrote that letter and somehow through letting go uh, and not being so attached to to the prize of getting into graduate school, I was able to sort of really tell, sort of say what I wanted to say. Um, But yeah, that was very hard. I started my letter off actually talking about Immanuel Kant, who's a a philosopher, um, who kind of started cognitive, the way of thinking about cognitive systems, um, you know, not in the brain, but in philosophy. And so it's a very unusual way to start out a letter applying to a neuroscience program, you know, talking about Immanuel Kant, this 300, 400-year-old philosopher, <laughs> I think 300 years. You know, it's kind of strange, but <clears throat> I think the committee liked that because it was unusual, and they probably get a lot of very similar letters written to them. Absolutely, absolutely. So where did you end up going? Um, I ended up going to the University of Arizona for my PhD, and um, so like I said, I got into a lot of different programs, and it was a very hard choice, but again, for me, it came back to really listening to why I was going to graduate school. What did I want out of graduate school, and what was the thing I wanted to study? And the University of Arizona has um, a first-class philosophy program. And they also have this center called the Center for Consciousness Studies, which has um, sort of a famous long time running um, conference on consciousness. And so I went there not just for the neuroscience program and the psychology program that I got into, but also because it was sort of the environment where I thought I would have the most chance of running into people who were interested in consciousness. And again, that was a big risk because uh, U of A is a great school, but it wasn't...